Welcome, friends. At the end of the last episode, we promised to shine a very, very bright light into the furthest corners of the cryptosphere, with just about as many altcoins as there are stars in the sky. What's the point of them all? Are they all serving different use cases or just trying to do the same thing, but better? Well, that is what we're here for. I didn't need them anyway. Illumination. That's what we're here for. Welcome to School of Block. Welcome to the startling galaxy of coins that is crypto. And like the stars in the night sky, we are discovering more and more every day, adding greater and greater complexity to what's possible with a simple token. But for now, we really just need to zero in on three specific types, which we'll be covering in depth in this episode. Protocol coins, utility tokens, and stable coins. And to begin our journey, we need to start at the beginning. And when it comes to blockchain, that means, hang on, where did I put it? Uh, oh yeah, somewhere safe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ooh. Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin is designed to be a form of money. Now, in episode six, we talked at length about how a blockchain works, but fundamentally, with a protocol like Bitcoins, the coin itself is used to secure the network. And what does that mean? Well, the miners are incentivized to support the network, as mining itself and facilitating transactions via the consensus mechanism means they earn more of this. Now, Bitcoin can be considered a protocol coin, and as can others such as Litecoin or Monero. They're created to act like money, representing a unit of account, store of value, and medium of transfer. But not all coins are designed or intended to be used in this way. Utility tokens, for example, provide users with a product and or service. Now, these tokens usually act as an access point into a network. Without the utility token, you can't access the services available on that platform. And they may also give you the opportunity to vote on how the network is run. Examples of this include Filecoin or Civic or Chili's. The most popular example of utility token is the ERC20 Ethereum standard. Now this is where it could get a little bit confusing, but stay with me. Ethereum itself is a protocol coin, but it also acts as an application layer. Again? Sorry. The smart contracts that run on the platform enable you to issue your own tokens that exist on top of the Ethereum infrastructure. Anyone can do it. It's not technically very difficult. And this is one of the reasons why we saw the almost Cambrian explosion of altcoins in 2017. Ethereum isn't the only coin that functions like this. Other examples include Cardano, Solana, and Tezos. Now, the Ethereum ERC20 standard made it possible for hundreds, if not thousands, of projects to launch. But transactions with utility tokens on the ERC20 platform actually require small amounts of Ethereum to power them. So if you've got a wallet with some mana in it, you're also going to need to have some ETH in the same wallet there before you can make any transactions. And with gas fees where they are right now, which is very, very high indeed, if you're a Decentraland developer, that might not be something you are too happy about. Now, this Cambrian explosion was a necessary part of crypto evolution, and not all of these projects will make it to maturity, but like in Mother Nature, stop it! The strongest will survive, probably going on to launch on their own mainnet. And why would they want to do that? Because then that token will have control over its own ecosystem and rewards. It's the Cambrian explosion. Now, what else can you build on a platform like Ethereum? Decentralized applications, or dApps. You might hear them called dApps as well. Now, dApps create value by facilitating access to protocols or services, and then users pay transaction fees for this convenience. Examples that you might have heard of include Upland and NBA Top Shots. Now, you might also have heard of the recent hype around DeFi, or decentralized finance. Essentially, it's a subcategory of dApps that allows peer-to-peer -peer lending and borrowing. Now, the majority of these tokens run on Ethereum and have their own utility tokens, which allow users to pay for the service. And they have driven a huge increase in the use of the network, which some would argue has shown the limitations of that network. 
Aave, Yearn Finance and Uniswap all exist inside the DeFi space along with many, many others. Now, one huge part of the crypto space we haven't mentioned so far is stablecoins. Now, these are frequently built on top of existing protocols. Coinbase's offering, USDC, was created on the Ethereum blockchain and it's ERC20 compatible in order to support rapid transfers of USDC on the Ethereum network. And our old friend Tether was in fact built on top of Bitcoin via the OmniLayer protocol. So, whilst stablecoins can be classed as money, they don't necessarily have networks of their own, like protocol coins, and the whole idea of them is to make them stable. Voila. Now there is one final distinction to make, and that is the difference between fungible and non-fungible. Now we introduced this concept back in episode three, so do check that one out. But basically, if something is fungible, every individual unit of it is mutually interchangeable. You can exchange this one for that one without prejudice. And that's great for units of account like money. So coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and so on are designed to be fungible. But some tokens aren't. They're called non-fungible tokens, and artists, musicians, celebrities, even your mum are piling into the NFT space. Why? Because something that isn't interchangeable with something else is unique, and in the digital space, that is wild, because that uniqueness can bring value. So with an NFT, you can have an original artwork, limited edition album or a set of trading cards, all digital and all with certifiable provenance. Now, NFTs are pretty damn hot right now, so we'll be doing our due diligence and covering that in our next episode. You've been watching School of Block presented by Ledger and The Defiant, demystifying decentralization one block at a time. Don't forget to subscribe, drop us a like if that's what you're into, and until next time, here's to your financial...